Hi everyone, welcome to another video about research. If you like this video, I will encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. So let's begin. Today we are going to talk about what is triangulation and how we can use triangulation in our research. Now what is triangulation? It is actually a kind of research design that incorporates more than, for example, more than a theory. You're using multiple theories to help you to interpret a phenomena or a situation. Or you might be using more than one type of data to measure a specific uh, subject. Or you might be using more than one type of method to measure or to collect data. Or you might be involving more than one researcher um, from different backgrounds, from different expertise and, and disciplines uh, in order to investigate the phenomena. So the main objective of using triangulation is to we try to offset the, uh, the pros and cons of all this. Now one thing I want to highlight here is triangulation is not meant to be used in every research. Before you think about using triangulation in your research, you need to think about your research objective, whether you really need a multiple theory or multiple data or multiple method or even multiple researchers. For example, if you are doing some uh, regression analysis or using panel data, especially for example, if you're using research in accounting and finance where you're using the data from the company's annual reports for the past, say, 10 years, that might not need to use triangulation. So you have to consider your research question, research objective carefully before you say, hey, I want to use triangulation in my research. Triangulation, there are choices, okay? As I mentioned, you can have theory, data, method, and researcher. This one, um, I use multiple theories to understand a phenomenon. This is based on a study that I did back in 2016, where I study the students' self-regulated learning and their motivational beliefs while they use um, writing of weekly e-learning journals as well as an online discussion board. So I have three theories that helps me to understand the phenomenon here. Consider this case here, using multiple data or method. Well, the Common sense is that if you're using multiple data, you are using multiple methods, okay? So there are two main objectives here, or two purposes here you have to consider. Where are you, where you are looking, are you looking at the convergence of the findings, or you are using multiple methods or data as a complementary, okay? Like in this case here, I want to look at this pot, this uh, lovely pot here. Uh, do I want to know um, the wet of this pot or do I want to look at the image? Let's say, for example, I want to draw a, a picture of this pot. So I want to look at the image. So I could be, in this case here, I want to know the wet of the pot. So I could be taking measurement of the pot using three methods and therefore three set of data and to see whether all of them comes to an agreement. Based on the research that I did back in 2016, I used time series data to support the changes in the pre-test and post-test score. And this is actually shared in one of the videos that I have in my channel. Um, it was about uh, causality, how to improve causality of quasi-experimental research. So I encourage you to go over to my channel and watch this video. Or are you looking at complementary? In, an, in another word, you want to understand the phenomenon better right? by using different uh, methods or using different data to help you to paint different pictures. For example, in this case, if I want to draw a picture or uh, an image of this pot, I might want to look at it from different angle, from different angle, okay? So I might be using um, one direction, two direction, three direction. So I have the so-called 3D, three dimension before I draw this pot. So triangulation of data and methods here would act as a complementary uh, to each other. 
Um, again, drawing on one of the research that I did, I used interview to gain understanding on the changes of the pre-test, post-test. Right? So that, that is actually um, helped me to understand why there's a change between the pre-test and post-test scores. The last one is we are looking at using more than one researcher to do your research. Now, we might be involving researchers of different background, discipline and expertise. Now, the idea is we try to minimize uh, bias and, of course, to support each other with uh, our own expertise. Now, the outcome of triangulation is, well, generally, it should improve the quality of our research. So, in two aspects. Number one, it could be uh, cross-verification. In another word, when you use different data in your study, the data can be used as a cross-verification of each other. For example, like I mentioned just now, you can use time series data to verify the uh, validity uh, or the reasonableness of your pre-test and post-test scores. The second part, the second aspect, I would say, is the balance between methods. Like I said, um, certain methods have advantages and disadvantages. So when you're using more than one method, you are actually offsetting each other's, right? So the outcome is usually a better quality of research. Now, the takeaway for triangulation is there are three things that I want to share with all of you. Number one is um, triangulation is not meant for every research. So you need to consider your research question and your research objective, whether there is any need for triangulation. The second thing is you need to consider what are the choices that are suitable for you in your research, whether you should use theory, especially if you're looking at complex scenario, then you may need to use different theories to help you to interpret. And of course, lastly is how much do you need or how many do you need? Okay, do you need a different theories, data, methods, or even researchers? So you have to consider all these uh, factors carefully. That's all I have for all of you. I'll see you in my next video.